Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Two Geeks, Two Furious podcast, the only podcast on the internet where the two hosts sound so goddamn alike, you'd think it's one guy with schizophrenia. I'm Zach Berman. Caleb Berman. All right, so um, I hear something interesting happened, was it today, in history? Yeah, today in my history class, or well, before my history class started. Because uh, my pal Jeremiah always wanders in there with me and gives people crap and bugs crap my, out of my teacher. But anyways, so you know of my obsession with Go recently. Go is like an ancient Chinese board game played on like a grid board with black and white rocks. And it's just like, I've been so fascinated with it the last few weeks. And I've been trying to learn how to play it, and I just can't do it. So over the weekend, I went to a bookstore and I bought a book about how to play Go. It's called Learn to Play Go, A Master's Guide to the Ultimate Game. Keep in mind, you play it, you, you play it with stones and a good pattern board. It's just the most boring shape you'll ever see in your life. But I've been so fascinated with it. So I bought this book. And I took this book to school with me. And I'm using a, a Yu-Gi-Oh card as my bookmark. So I go in to history today with Jeremiah, my friend Jeremiah. And he's been making fun of me for my fascination, it's not an obsession, I swear, for my fascination with Go. And uh, everyone who comes in is curious, and they're looking at the book, and they're opening it up, and they see my bookmark and whatnot. And um, he's like, dude, you're such a nerd. You're reading a book about Go. You got a Yu-Gi-Oh card as your bookmark. I'm like, dude, I know. Could I be any more of a nerd if I tried? And uh, this other kid, Chandler, comes up to me, and he looks at me, and he goes, Caleb, if you weren't already a ladies' man, you are now. <laughs> That's great. So, um, I think you should elaborate on Go a little bit because I remember this is, it's been like a week and I went over there for, what did I go over there for? Grandpa was over. Grandpa was in town. Yeah, my grandfather who I need to get him on here sometime because (laughs) he is something else. He's white trash, redneck. Anyway, um, I remember you were obsessing over it. And you were trying to play it, and you got so angry, you were yelling at the computer and all that stuff. So tell me a little bit about... Well, it was it was to the point where I was reading the Wikipedia page, and I read the whole thing, and I still could not grasp the concept. I had to go out and buy a book. Anyway, so me and Jeremiah, once again, we were watching this movie. It's called Pi, and the two of the main characters, they sit and play Go during several scenes. And they're just sitting there taking turns, putting stones on this... Grid pattern board. It's like a 19 by 19 board with yeah. intersecting lines, and you take turns putting the stones on the intersections. And I'm like, oh my god! And I don't know why I thought this. I mean, it, it, it's exactly what it what it sounds like. I'm like, oh my god, that looks like the tightest shit ever. I gotta learn how to play this game. <laughs> so I look it up, and I'm just like, all right. So it says the object of the game is to surround more territory than your opponent. I'm like, so surround more territory. Well. What, what, what does that entail? Do you have to have more pieces on the board than your opponent? Mm-hmm. So with that amount of knowledge, I go online and play against a computer. And I'm playing, and it's like, you have lost by 180 points. And I'm like, what? What do you mean I lost by 180 points? <laughs> so I keep reading into it, and I even watch tutorials on YouTube. I'm like, I do not understand what is happening. So I buy this book, and it turns out you don't want to have more pieces on the board than your opponent. You want to literally surround an area, close off an area with your stones, and then the blank spaces in those areas become your territory. So I'm getting better at it, but it took me so a ridiculous amount of time to figure it out. Any Anybody with a brain could have gone online and read into it and figured out how to play it, but I was just like, what is even happening? i got to go buy a book. Yeah, I remember I discovered that. I used to get that Shonen Jump. Yeah. Because it had Dragon Ball in it mm-hmm. and Naruto, and everybody thought it was the shit when I was in, like, fourth grade. And they had that, like, Hikari no It's called Hikari no and I've been reading it on my phone a lot. Yeah, and then, uh, so, I remember reading that, and it's just as exciting as you'd expect it's, it to be. It's, it's just yeah. a bunch of kids playing, but, like, just moving around little, little Yeah, it's just a bunch of kids playing board. Go, and then somebody will lose, and it's like, it's like someone just killed their mother in front of it. Yeah, and then I tried to, um play it on, like, early internet games where it's just, like, HTML. It wouldn't even flash. And I had no clue. So I've been there. Yeah. You're yeah. reliving my experiences as a uh, 
younger child. Yeah, so somebody brought up Akara no Go today when I was talking about it. He's like, isn't there like a like a manga about that or like an anime? I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Akara no Go. And Jeremiah goes, yeah, but only faggots read that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is this? My dad just brought something into our studio. <laughs> oh, Sci-Fi Expo with Carl Urban. Okay, we got to go to that. Anyway, what were we saying? Okay, so I heard you uh, you got the um, Blu-ray extended edition of Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, Wolverine. It's... I, I was pretty disappointed. I thought it was going to be really hardcore. There's, there's the one major difference between the Wolverine extended cut and the Wolverine regular cut is that whenever Wolverine cuts somebody, you see a little bit of blood. That's and it? That's pretty much it. There's two more F-bombs, though, and a couple extra little scenes. But for the most part, it's just the same thing. So it's basically just what it should have been in the first place? Pretty much. Because, I mean, in the comic books, and especially in that game that came out for uh, Wolverine Origins... That was hardcore. Yeah, brutal. It was what it should be. Yeah, that's what it should have been. Should have just been in, like, snick, 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 blood going everywhere. Yeah, and there was blood in the theatrical version. Like, whenever it showed his claws, you could see some blood on there, which I was like, freaking finally. I mean, it's PG-13. You can have a little bit of blood, can't you? Yeah. It's uh, Like, in all the in the X-Men trilogy, it's ridiculous that he just goes slaughters some people, and his things are just perfectly shiny. It's like, whatever. Yeah, it should have been something of it. They should have had that in the first place. Yeah. Like, they should have gone for, like, a a rated R movie, which I guess is the main issue with uh, that Deadpool movie that they want to come out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they can't pitch a uh, superhero movie that's not for, like, the whole family to go see. Yeah. I, they did it with Blade, though, didn't they? Blade? But that's not, that's I'm kind sure of an Blade obscure, that's a sort of an excu- obscure character. Yeah, right? like... It's Most not. general moviegoers could, like, see a trailer or poster for that movie and have no idea it's based on a comic book. Yeah, it's not a superhero or anything. Yeah. He doesn't go around in a cape or anything no, like that. No. He doesn't have, like, a fancy, elaborate costume or anything. But uh, have you heard about that Deadpool movie? Did I, I send you the script to it? Oh, yeah, yeah, you sent me the script. I only read, like, half the script, but it was really good. It was pretty good. I like the part where he's, like, he makes a reference to the Ryan Reynolds version. Yeah. Like, he has the the, um... The, the action, action figure, figure from Wolverine Origins, and he like he looks at it and he's like, uh, "What the fuck is wrong with this?" And he <laughs> throws it in the garbage. <laughs> but like, you can't. That's a little bit too weird. He drops an f bomb. He drops a lot of them. Uh, it's incredibly violent. He's constantly breaking the fourth wall. But I mean, the game wasn't even that great, but it sold pretty well. So yeah, I, mean, I don't like, know what the problem is. When they break the fourth the fourth wall like that, it's funny. But then they like they try and bring it into the X Men movie continuity, and then it then that's when it starts to bother me. Because like you can't have this existing alongside the X Men universe, especially because in that script it's a rebooted version of the Deadpool character. It's not the Deadpool from Origins Wolverine. Yeah, but this is taking place in a universe where that movie exists because there's another part. But it's also taking place in the X Men movie universe. No, because... He associates a, with the X-Men characters. Well, there's an... Yeah. Other versions of them, though. Are you sure? I don't know. But there's, like, a part where it doesn't matter. It's Deadpool. It doesn't have to follow any sort of logic. <sighs> but it does. If it exists in that universe, it has to follow a set of rules. He kills... In the comic books, he kills the man who draws the comics. <sighs> there's but no it's, rules it's at all. It's a comic book. It works better in a comic book than it does on film. There's a love triangle between him, Thanos, and Death. <laughs> It would work better in a comic book than it would on film. Yeah, I guess that's true. And it, it worked pretty well in the game. The gameplay itself was kind of shitty, but the rest of the game... I don't give a shit cool. about gameplay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like to play video games. I like to watch people play video games. I feel like I get just as much out of that as I possibly could playing them. Because I'll be playing a video game and I'm like, what, what are these freaking controls? How, how do I go in that room? How do I talk to this person? Like, wh- which one's the jump button? I can watch somebody play a video game. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Yeah. But I like <laughs> Deadpool and I like comic books, so yeah, it, it I'll watch a, you play. <laughs> it was an alright game. They needed more time on it. But they they need to make that movie. And then they already did, um, Ryan Reynolds said they did some motion capture tests. So they're motion capturing his face and then they're going to digitally add the mask on top so they can have him make... Like, yeah, if he's motion capturing Ryan Reynolds for a superhero costume always works out so well, right? 
<laughs> Green Lantern. Yeah. That movie wasn't that bad. I know. I don't... It, it, it I, goes on too long. Keep in mind, it, I've only seen it once when it came out, but I really don't feel like it deserves the hate it gets. Uh, it goes on a little bit too long. It takes too long to really get started, and the coolest parts don't last long enough. I just... I guess my thing is, I just love Ryan Reynolds. He is... I hate X-Men Origins Wolverine. He is great. Like, the little parts where his mouth isn't sh- sewn shut and he's just the stupidest fucking character you'll ever see in your life. When he's just Ryan Reynolds, he's hilarious. And he's good as Green Lantern, and I don't, I don't know, he's just, he's just super cool. Yeah, I, I kind of want to watch the, like, extended edition, even though I was just complaining about the original version of Green Lantern being too long. I just want to see what they... I'm, yeah. Added. Maybe it makes it a little bit better. I've never seen... I've only seen the movie once, like I said, and I just... I feel like I really need to see the extended edition. It it didn't look finished. I feel like I just need to see the movie again in general before I really judge it. Yeah, I don't remember it being that bad though. It was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I'm the parts on uh, what is it, Oa? Mm-hmm. Those were awesome, but they weren't yeah, there long yeah, yeah. enough. Kilowog was dope. The big guy. Yeah, he was cool. Yeah, he was and really then cool. Uh, who's the bad guy? Uh, I always forget him. The yellow lantern guy. Sinestro. Sinestro, Sinestro was, was really good. Who's the guy? Who's what's that guy's name? The he's actor? In, yeah, he's I in, um, he's in the first Sherlock Holmes. He's, I, I love him, like, as any villain. I don't remember who played him. I don't, I, I can't even. He's got a presence about him. He's great as Sinestro. He's really cool. I can't even think of him in the movie, actually. Like, I just remember he was cool. Yeah, I mean, even though Green Lantern wasn't all that successful, I feel like they should have gone through with the sequel. With him as the villain. I thought it could have been really cool. Yeah, they could have been done. No, they're doing that stupid reboot. We already talked about that last time. Yeah. We don't need to get into that again. Well, just... well, here's my question, though. Do you think they are, they're going to go through with rebooting Green Lantern? Or do you think they're going to incorporate him, Ryan Reynolds, into the continuity? I don't know. I don't remember them doing anything in the Green Lantern movie that would, that would. ruin mm-hmm. that. And speaking of that, they're talking again about Lex Luthor. Being Brian Cranston. Yes. Do you yeah. think that would be awesome? Um, I really like Brian Can- Brian Cranston. I love Breaking Bad. And part of me thinks it would be kind of cool for uh, to have him as Lex Luthor, but he is really old. <laughs> yeah, but um, we're we've got sort of Superman's not that young. I mean, it's not like we start off. I mean, this is it's an origin story, but we didn't even have Superboy. Right. So there should never you be got Superman. that, and then apparently, I mean, uh, what's his face? Ben Affleck. Affleck. Batfleck. Affleck. He's in Batfleck's going to be old. Bat. Yeah, he's like in his forties, isn't he? Yeah. So Batfleck's going to be old. And so I it read makes sense that for... he's going to be like an old, like grizzled Batman. Yeah. Which doesn't make any sense because it's like, where was he during Man of Steel? But whatever. Uh, running in fear because he doesn't <laughs> like aliens or something. But no, like. If if he's a little bit older, it would make sense for Lex Luthor to be pretty old, and he'd be really, really good. And they're also talking about getting a black guy, which who was it? Was it um? I don't remember who it was. It was it wasn't Idris Elba? Was it? He's in every superhero movie on demand. He was considered, but I don't even know if they offered the part. Yeah, but I don't care about any of that. Like, I don't see why people get butt hurt about changing the. I just said Idris Elba is in every superhero movie on demand. That's not even close to being true. He's in two. What else was he in other than Thor? Thor and Ghost Rider 2. He's in Ghost Rider 2? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that movie. That's bad. That what movie. Is... Oh, I love Nick Cage, and no matter what you say, you're never going to convince me other, otherwise. Nick Cage is just the greatest. That was such a fun movie. It was bad. Really, really bad, but it was so much fun. I remember going to see that, and we left, and we were like, that was terrible. So but good. So much fun. I feel like I could conquer just the world right now. Nick Cage being... Just crazy, insane, running around screaming, and then Ghost Rider coming up and just tearing people apart. It is just fun. The best, the best parts are just the parts that don't make any sense. Like just little montages of him like riding yeah. on his motorcycle, but, and then it, like it it keeps flashing between him and he's like, ah. Yeah, you got the first movie where like when he transforms, like he starts to catch on fire and like he's like screaming in pain, but then he just like all his skin melts off and he turns into Ghost Rider. The transformation scenes in the second one are so bizarre. Where he's just running around on his motorcycle, and he's like, there's all his different flashes, and like he's got like half of a ghost skull face and half of Nick Cage screaming, and it's crazy. It's like some sort of weird art house film mixed with a superhero movie yeah. to make just a mess of a movie. And then there's <laughs> the part where 
he says he has to pee or whatever, and the kid, like, fl- it flashes to what he's imagining, and yeah. it's him, and he's, fl- like, got a flamethrower coming out of his yeah, dick. Yeah, and he's like, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> and then it just ends. Like, yeah. they set up these villains that you don't care about, mm-hmm. and then it's just, he beats them and it's over. Yeah. There's no real climax to the movie. It's a mess. And it doesn't fit in the continuity of the first movie. It's just, like, this standalone, crazy action It's a sequel, Cage movie. but it's not a sequel. Yeah. It's a reboot, but it's not a reboot. It's a standalone movie, but it's also, a, it's, it's a mess. Everybody watch it. Yeah, everybody watch it. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out on something that... And if you're like most people, you haven't seen it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I don't know anybody else who saw it. Uh, So, speaking of superhero movies, Marvel movies, Spider-Man 2. Oh. Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man 2. First of all, I want to say that I hate that it's called Amazing Spider-Man 2. I really wish they would have gone the direction of, like, naming after comic book titles. They should have called it, like, The Ultimate Spider-Man or The Spectacular Spider-Man. I don't know. That's just me. But, anyways... Did you see the, um, like, you, you, you've seen the trailer, right, that came out several weeks ago? It's the first one, yeah. Yeah. The one right. that looks like video game graphics at the beginning? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but on New Year's Eve, close to midnight in uh, Times Square, they uh, they aired a, uh, a second short little trailer. Did you see that one? No. Uh, well, they had uh, Mark Webb up on stage they, doing, like, a little interview, and uh, then on the big screen in Central Park, not Central Park, Times Square, Times Square. On the big screen in Times Square, they uh, they show like this short little Spider-Man trailer with like mm-hmm. Electro yeah. in Times Square, and he like opens up this cage thing, this uh, on the ground, and there's like power cables under there, and he's like grabbing them, he's like, Aah! you know, sucking up all the electric energy. Is that what he sounds like? No, see, he doesn't. Not even close. He doesn't make a sound. <laughs> but you know, I had to, anyways. And this cop's like, "Sir, get your hands away from the cables," and he like looks up, and he's like all blue and glowy, and then he's like. Shocking the shit out of people, you know, making them have a bad time, and Spider-Man shows up, and, you know, it's pretty dope. But it starts off with a little introduction from Stan Lee, and he's like, I'm here to show you, is that an accent? I don't know. I'm here to show you a scene, a clip from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and he goes, I don't know about you, but I am so excited for this. And the thing about Stan Lee is, when he does stuff like that, I can never tell if he's genuinely really excited or if he's being super sarcastic. Yeah. And I, like, I don't know if I just want to hug him or if I just want to be like, shut up, Stan Lee. Stop being such a dick. Well, I know he, he gets genuinely excited about his cameos. Like, yeah, oh, like he loves online, the cameos, yeah. And he's always like, ah, I gotta tell you, this is the greatest cameo yet. And that's every single character. Yeah, everyone. But, like, he, he, get, he genuinely gets excited, but I don't know if he's even seen the movie. Yeah. He's like, I am so excited for this. Like, n- no, you're not. You're just, you're being sarcastic. I can tell. Who the hell is calling Someone me? is getting a phone call. It's spam. Stop spam calling me on my cell phone. Where do those spam calls even come from? I don't how do they, know. How do they get your, your phone number? I get those. I get this. I don't know. And usually they don't answer. They're like, uh, we'd like to give you, uh, yeah, we'd like to help you send you on a trip to Europe. No, you don't. Shut up. <laughs> You don't want to send me on no trip. Yeah, because I had somebody last week call me, and they they wanted to be my travel agent. (laughs) I don't need a travel agent. Where am I going to go? It's like, like, I'm going to call like that. I was like, I'm in in class right now. I I, I don't need a travel agent. I'm 17. Where am I going to go by myself? It's insane. Shut up, dog. Freaking dogs. Anyway, um, so did you see everybody's going nuts that they started... I thought I muted that. It recorded me yelling. Was that dead air just now? Our dogs are downstairs and they're being real obnoxious. Well, I can edit it out. Anyway, so the internet's going nuts because they released pictures of the first set photographs of Peter Capaldi as the new doctor. Yeah, and it's just like the doctor... In 11th Doctor clothes, just stand next to Clara. But still, it managed to get me really excited when I saw it. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm usually so glad that they upped the production values of the show and everything. Yeah. But the only problem is, we still aren't going to see anything until, like, September. Mm -hmm. We've got nine months to wait. It's crazy. Like, that show has such a following, but, like, I'm I'm still surprised it lasted so long, because, like, you've... 
think that going so long between seasons, people would lose interest. But, I don't know, apparently not. Yeah, but back then, um, back when it first started, it's like, they'd be like, look, we've got a picture of the doctor on the set, and then we'd see it next week. Yeah. But now we've got to wait nine months. Yeah. We don't even know what he looks like yet. Like, I know. Like, what's his wearing... outfit going to be? He's still wearing 11 Doctor clothes. He hasn't really... Yeah, because they always do that in the first episode. That's a weird thing to complain about. But, I mean... but it's just... And that last episode was complete and total garbage. Oh, so bad. If you guys didn't see the Christmas special of Doctor Who, or if you just don't even care, I mean, whatever. But it was so bad. The beginning was good, and the end was really good. But we're talking like 30 minutes but in the middle. The whole middle is just... Oh, I can't stand it. It's terrible. I watched it again with Dad. Not as bad as I thought, but it's still not... I have no desire to watch it again. It's still not good. I just wanted to see the end again. Yeah. And Dad hadn't seen stuff. it yet, because you guys were on your... Well, you weren't on vacation. They were on vacation. But anyway, watched it with him. Not as bad. Still pretty terrible. It's not... I don't know. I actually like the movie better. Right, it's a doctor movie? Yeah. It's so entertaining. It's so bad. Don't you even defend it. I mean... <laughs> it's so bad, but it's so good. They, they, it is a huge plot point that the doctor is half human. That is not even a thing. I, it doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't make sense in the movie either. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But I will give you that Paul McCann as the eighth doctor is... Oh, he's fantastic. He's so great. Yeah, and then you get to see... Um, oh, they do the thing that I didn't like in the... The Christmas special. I don't like when they age the Doctor mm-hmm. in terms of one individual incarnation of him. So it starts off, and they imply that it's been a long time since uh, what's his face? Seven Doctor. Yeah, uh, Sylvester McCoy. McCoy. So he's old, and then they did it with Tenth Doctor as well in that one episode where they make him really old. Well, I mean. <laughs> It's one thing with Seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy, because it had literally been a while since he'd been on TV, right? Yeah, but they he was fake, literally that old. They fake aged the other ones, or yeah. well, they did it with Fifth Doctor, and it was weird, but it was cool for that little. Yeah, and they were like, oh, it's a little special temporal even... flux. That's why you were appearing so old. Yeah, but it's just it's dumb when they did it in the Christmas special with Matt Smith, mm-hmm. and it was kind of the makeup was pretty good, but he didn't make any effort at all to sound older. Yeah. And he, he acts the same and all. It's it just, it's goofy, and I don't like the idea that the Doctor's been doing whatever the hell his plan was on Am I that. staying on that planet? I don't know either. I don't like that decades pass before your eyes in a matter of seconds. It's ridiculous. It was, I guess it was cool. It's all wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. But, cool uh, we didn't have too much of the, um, catchphrases that you know I hate and the Fez bullshit. Yeah. Did he use any of the catchphrases? I don't know. I don't remember. I like uh, the use of the bow tie. Yeah, when he drops it at the end. Yeah, spoiler alert. We're, alright, full on Doctor Who spoilers right now, so. Well. I mean, it's been full on Doctor Who spoilers for like five minutes now, so if. Yeah, and the, the, if you can aired. look into the future and hear me saying this, you should probably turn it off. Chances are, Doctor Who if you're a fan of Doctor Who, you've already seen it. Yeah. Most likely. Except for you, Steve Dave. I'm sorry. And if you're not a fan of Doctor Who, you don't give two shits about what we're talking about right now. And none of it's important anyway. It's stupid. It's a terrible episode. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. It makes me angry. Um, so, yeah, did you hear about that guy in Utah? No. Okay. So, Utah recently... I guess they made it legal to get... For gay marriage. Gay marriage legal. And... Good. Well, some crazy Mormon dude is like, I'm going to go on a hunger strike. Like, All right, man. If and you then, that, that's on you. And then he goes, I'm, I don't hate anybody, and I'm not trying to be, you know, homophobic or anything, because yeah. I have gay friends and all this stuff. And he goes, no, it's about my... My freedom of religion. Well, nobody's stopping him from... His... He, is, he is being hateful, though. Yeah, nobody's stopping him from being religious. So anyway, he's like, I'm not going to eat until... Um, uh, he's Until they they overturn this, this law and make it illegal again. 
So what an asshole. I've been following it because it's really fun to watch. Because it's sort of like, I just want to see who wins. Mm-hmm. Like, nature or this guy. Pretty sure it's nature. And he's like, I'm go- this is going to keep going until they they overturn the law or I die. I'm like, I'm, I want to see what happens. I really want to see what happens. Well, guess what? They're, they've put it on, like, they've halted the law right now. Why? This guy's going to think he won. If this, this guy's going to think he had something to do with it. You can't go on a hunger strike unless you're important. Gandhi did it. He had all these followers. And it was his last chance to make any sort of stand. But you can't just be some random guy who's like, I'm not going to eat unless you make the gays not be able to get married anymore. It's it's stupid. It's so stupid. But, yeah, I really... It was fun. It was like a real-life Hunger Games. Like, I was <laughs> I was checking every few hours okay. online. I'm like, I want to see if this guy's starved yet. I was like, I want to know if this guy can beat this or if... You know, Mother Nature is going to take its toll, and he's just going to keel over and die of freaking uh, starvation. So it's literally the Hunger Games. He's hungry, and then he was tweeting it, and he's tweeting these very long ones. And he's like, "Day one, everything's fine. Day two, things are going pretty well." He's like, "All I'm eating is water and some multivitamins," and he keeps doing that, and they're all like that. And then finally, you get to one day. Well, he, there's one where he's like, I lost 25 pounds in the past two weeks. <laughs> and then there's one where he just goes, feeling all right. <laughs> That's it. It's like, clearly he's not feeling okay. Because it, he goes from, like, having full-on, like, sentences, several sentences telling you how he's doing, and then one day he's just like, I'm all right. <laughs> it's like, I, I can just see him, like, barely being able to move his hand to the mouse to, t- like, move over to the send button on the tweet. I saw a homeless man in the street today eating a cheeseburger out of the trash. I nearly wept. It's going to be his next tweet. <laughs> and then he said he misses um, he misses Mexican food. Yeah, that's the sad part. He goes, missing Mex- I, I really miss Mexican food. Next day, feeling all right. <laughs> or he's like, I'm okay. Or I'm just waiting for the one where it's just like, I can't see anything. I can't feel my toes. But it's just, it's a load of horse shit. You can't. It's the equivalent of being a child and holding your breath when you don't get what you want. And there's no sense in it. Like, how is anybody interfering with his ability to practice his religion? They're like, the gays can get married. And somehow he's like, I can't be a Mormon anymore. I can't go to church. And, uh, I don't get it. I really, truly don't get it. Something else happened today. The only reason I'm doing this podcast right now, this is for you, my boss. I'm hyped up on drugs. Like, not like cocaine or anything. Wow, you really just threw that out there, huh? No, it's uh, it's cold medicine. I could barely talk all day, and I coughed so much I threw up. But when I was sick when I was a kid, I'd go to the library and get a VHS copy of Jurassic Park, right? Right. And I'd go home and watch it. All the time when I was sick. It was usually... It was just one of them. Like, sometimes I even got three because I was too dumb to realize it sucks. And I thought it was cool because I had the giant Spinosaurus. Anyway, I got it on Blu-ray. So it's like old school and new school. Yeah. And the nostalgia today, I was sick and I watched Jurassic Park in Blu-ray. And it was beautiful and I felt like a child again, but modern. Like, not 90s. Because it wasn't all fuzzy with the little, you know, the fuzzy bar that yeah, comes up? Yeah, yeah. When you get a movie, usually at the library or a video store, because it's, like, been watched so many times. So you get that bar that's, like, <laughs> at the top. And uh, you can't do that anymore because you have to you have to go out in the desert with all your, your archaeologist tools and uh, dig up a, a VCR. Oh, yeah. Get it because, you know, dress with <laughs> and, yeah. play, like, fossils. But, um... I made it funny. Have you seen that movie? I've seen parts of that movie. We need to watch it because I'm pretty sure after watching it again today that Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man is channeling Jeff Goldblum from Jurassic Park. Really? He you acts, think that's where he got his performance? He acts exactly like Tony Stark in that movie. He plays the guy who's like, chaos theory, chaos theory. And then he's like flirting with the chick, but she's going out with the dude. And then uh, 
it's pretty good, and the the T Rex shows up, and it's also super meta. Like they go into this room, it's like the first part of the tour, and there's a screen where it's the dude talking about things, and there's like cartoons and shit, and uh, he's like, uh, the music that's in the presentation right now, it's just a placeholder. We're hoping to get someone good to do it. He's like probably a march or something. <laughs> John Williams did the soundtrack. Wow, probably a march. Yeah, and uh, so it's it's really meta at that part. He's there's several things that he talks about that are like commenting on the movie itself. Yeah, but I mean, if you know anything, like especially if you've seen that whitest kids you know sketch with with John Williams, with John Williams like, like, bum, 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 yeah. I and he gets his like, whole family involved in like a, a songwriting contest, and they all just go and like bum, 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 bum. Yeah, so it's yeah. great. But um, I do that with my boss all the time. He hates it. I secretly loves it. <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, we've hit about thirty minutes already. Not bad for me being sick out of my mind. Mm-hmm. And uh, tune in next week for another episode of Two Geeks Too Furious. <laughs>